Hello friends. Today in this video, I am going to show you how we can use Inertia.js using the React adapter along with TypeScript in Laravel. So I like to work with Inertia.js a lot. I love the uh, approach of what Jonathan Renning says, the monolith framework, right? And uh, for a long time, I have been using the JavaScript syntax for building React-based Inertia applications, but some I always wanted to work with TypeScript. And this tweet, you know, helped me, this article basically helped me understand how to set up TypeScript in my Inertia application. And due to that, I decided why don't we create a video out of it. Although this has a beautiful article, which guides you step by step, but for the visual learners, I think this video will help. So let's get started. I'll create a new Laravel application. So I'm going to use the composer create project Laravel slash Laravel syntax, and I will create that. And while this is happening, let's just quickly see what you know, the steps are. So he creates a new application requires the inertia laravel adapter this is the server side setup then then we need to create an app.blade.php inside the root template folder which is our resources slash views okay and once that is done i think the server side of things are done i mean that's the simple way of installing inertia for laravel um, so in my case let's just wait out for laravel to install almost done Okay, so go inside the folder. Okay, so this step is done. I used create the composer syntax. If you have Laravel globally installed, you can use that command as well. And then we pull up inertia. And while this is happening, why don't we create this blade file as well? So I'll open up the code in Visual Studio Code. And now inside resources, views, I'll have app.blade.php, okay? Although we will be using Inertia along with TypeScript, let's just also implement the authentication scaffolding, which is available with Laravel UI. Yes, there is Jetstream, which is available, but this is just new. And you know, if you want to work with the Laravel UI and don't have all those scaffolding in place, then what we can do is, use laravel ui so i have laravel slash ui okay i'll do a composer require because although jetstream is available but you can still use laravel ui it has the latest 3.0 version okay still compatible with the laravel 8 version okay so we have pulled in laravel ui as well and one more reason to use laravel ui instead of jetstream is that as of now jetstream only has the view version or view uh, yeah view version of inertia and not a react version so um you know, that was one reason i haven't created or started any project with that i am waiting for the react adapter for the community to bring in okay so yes um this is done i'll need to run npm install i could have copied that anyways oops not dev e it's dev so yeah, what is going to happen is while this is installing, I can serve the application, open up, right? And we see this two packages, uh, sorry, those two links, which redirect the user to the login form and the registration. However, you can see things are broken. There's no CSS you know, loading to plop, properly render the form because we need to generate the final build files. And that's something which we will do. While this is installing, let's just move ahead with our setup. Okay, so we have done this. We need to do this for sure. So what I will try to do is, okay, this is almost done. So let's just wait and I'll keep my NPM run watch over here. And let's generate a URL for us. PHP artisan make controller test controller and we'll open up web.php so this is a new format which is highly um, preferred by many developers because 
and it gives you a lot of advantages in refactoring and the ids also quickly take you to the controller so uh, this format has changed now there are two ways either you can reference the entire namespace or you can just you know use the controller name and import that in your use statement both of them are same so let's go to our controller index method is ready and return inertia render this is how we will be returning an inertia page on this route we'll have a home folder and an index file so that's the convention let's just go to resources js we need a pages folder okay let, let us go step by step i think i'm moving way too ahead we haven't installed the inertia's front end so first we will install these npm packages so we are installing react react dom types react and we will also install this to package in one shot okay and the dev dependencies we can install in a separate command so i've copied it let's just wait for this to finish install the dev dependencies we are installing ts loader and typescript okay now once you have these two packages right it is very important to generate the ts config now the ts config is uh, generated using this command so let's just run that now if you have ts c installed globally then you will be able to run it however in my case i haven't installed that so how do i circumvent that so there is one way which is node modules dot bin folder has the tsc binary and i can do this so i have generated the ts config we can look at that ts config is here right this is being generated using the command now one more change which we need to do is the webpack has react in it right and that is something which we will have to eventually change so before that why don't we first initialize our inertia app this is the code from the documentation so you can use it there's no problem basically what this code does is let me go into the app.js paste it over here it imports the modules or you know the pages which are created inside the pages folder so that's what i was saying that we need to create a pages folder inside that we will have a home folder and inside that we will have our index.tsx okay so i have initialized the app and now we will create our page so inside js we will have pages home index.tsx tsx okay um go inside editor config ts comma tsx i want these two files to have indentation size as two okay it's not respecting the ts config must be some interim problem we can go ahead right now okay return right so we have saved everything and it says that is breaking somewhere it is not able to still load the file so the first change which we need to do is obviously make it ts in our webpack and i think now i need to reload but before that there's one more change we need to create a babel rc file while we install these dependencies so i'll just install it here create the babel rc touch open the file and copy this content once this is done i think we are then ready to run and it should work okay so we have success which means if i now try to load my route which is temp home it shows me welcome now how do i ensure that you know the rest of the typescript functionalities are working for example you know if i have an interface am i able to you know properly define the interface for a prop so let's just say i have a inside my components folder i have common layouts or rather layout and then index.tsx okay this is my layout which every component will extend so that you know, i get a common html markup
So I have this markup in this layout component and let me just export this. So the idea is that we basically use this component as the container for every page. Now, what I want to do is in this component, send props, which should have, which can have title as a, uh, how do you say optional attribute string the ligatures are creating a problem anyway so this is a string this symbol is very weird right this is better so so i've changed the font and basically what i am saying is the title is optional hence the question mark and the type is string now once we do this we need to define the component type so we will do react.fc okay and we pass the props so I can do props in here and then I'll destructure certain variables from the props. What is the first thing? It's the title and the children. Okay. And quickly, let's just have a conditional block over here. If I have the title, then I render the title over here. All right and similarly in here now obviously i will have the children otherwise what's what's the use of the layout so there's no condition here in this particular block okay and in home now i can take this out have layout push this in from the home and because we can pass a title welcome to my home page now, if I refresh, we are able to get that. So, so TypeScript is installed because you know this is way we typically will implement TypeScript. We have defined the you know props. The type is laid out here. So you know this basically ensures that you know the, the type hints are working properly. The data what is being expected is defined, and we were able to render everything in here. So if we quickly recap, right, what have we done? We have installed Laravel. We installed the Laravel UI. We created a scaffolding with auth using the UI react adapter or the react preset. Okay. I, I think it's called preset, not an adapter. So we did that. Then we installed inertia. Okay. Which allows us to, you know, create this kind of inertia response, right? We created our blade file which returns you know the, this this thing this blade directive basically ensures that we return inertia components as you know uh, from the page directory now our page directory has tsx files so the app js where it you know initializes the inertia js uh, inertia app reads any component inside the pages directory as you know inertia uh, a pages which inertia can render now because these pages are tsx we had to do certain kinds of configuration we installed the at the rate types react you can see in the package uh, the json we have a few entries for example you know we have where is my dependencies we have inertia js which is obviously the adapter for inertia we have types react which are the uh, you know, TypeScript definitions for React.js. We installed TS and TS Loader because these are how you tell Webpack that you know how to compile a TypeScript file. Then we created two files, two very important files. One is the TS config, okay, and the second one is Babel RC. With these things in place, I think we are left with only one small tweak, which is mix React should change to mix.ts and then we are ready to go so i think this is a very nice way to work with inertia any which ways i like working with inertia and i use react a lot with it and this article really helped me my friend on twitter you know was responsible for me to explore this he took the initiative of you know, defining it and then i decided why why don't we create a video out of it as well so if you like this, do drop in a comment, 
do like the video if you really enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel